Hi, welcome back to an absolutely freezing cold workshop for episode 24 of the Rickenbacker 620 12 string build. And in this episode, we're finally gonna get the top attached to this guitar and get it trimmed down to shape. Now I got the electrics done last time because I'm waiting to get this top glued on because I didn't want to do it until I had the pickups and I could kind of figure out what I needed to be doing in terms of routing for this. However, I've had the delivery and I don't know which way around they go, but I've got some pickups. Now these are Kent Armstrong toaster top style pickups. I was looking at getting some by a company called The Creamery, which I've heard really, really good things about. However, when I went to order them, their order book was full for the time being, which is generally a really good sign. Unfortunately, it meant I couldn't get my pickups. So I had to get an alternative and I had a look online. These are ones that I could readily get. I read some reviews and they were generally really favorable. The one negative that I did hear about them was that they were slightly less jangly than the Rickenbacker pickups that somebody previously had fitted to the guitar. My thinking was, if I'm building a 12 string, slightly less jangly might not necessarily be a bad thing. So I've gone with them. The bonus to getting these pickups was they were actually 70 quid cheaper than the other ones. I don't know, they might be 70 quid less good than the other ones, who knows, we will soon find out. But what it has taught me is that these pickups are absolutely totally flat on the bottom. So in theory, all I need to worry about is getting the pickup wires into the cavity. However, whilst I know that these fit kind of flush to the top, they're actually mounted on some springs. So there's a, a machine screw that goes through there. I'm assuming into the body of the guitar and that works on this little spring to give a little bit of adjustability. Now, I think that adjustability will be a good thing to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna route in a small channel that will enable me to put those springs in and give me that little degree of adjustability. And to be honest, that should be quite a straightforward thing to do. It's just a bit of marking, measuring, rattling up a quick template. It doesn't have to be too fancy, which is good news because that also means that there is now definitely nothing stopping me from getting this top prepared and glued on. But on the subject of the pickups, the only thing I don't really like about them is on other pickups I've seen, they actually have four screws that hold the top to the base. These have been kind of riveted together and it just looks a little bit cheap and shonky. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna screw a small machine screw into each of those corners and then cut the thread flush on the back just to give me the look of the screws rather than the rivets. I just prefer that from aesthetic point of view. But other than that, I think these pickups look really nice. I'm quite happy with them. The chrome looks nice. So yeah, good stuff. However, as is usually the case in these things, it's not gonna be just as simple as slapping some glue on this and getting it in position. There are a few little things that I need to do before we can do that. And the first thing I want to do is just make sure I understand where these channels are for the wiring and make sure I've got that marked on the top. So once I've got my routes in, I know exactly where I'm heading to get the drill bit into there. And further to that, I need to figure out how I'm gonna get my ground wire from under the bridge into the control cavity. That is gonna be a little bit more tricky because I haven't actually got the bridge yet. So I'm gonna be relying on doing some measuring there, I think, but should be okay. So I think first up, I'm just gonna take some measurements. And transfer them onto the top. And that'll give me a much better idea of where I need to aim for. This one might be a little bit tricky, getting a, a drill in at that angle, but I'm sure we'll be okay. I'm sure that'll be fine. 
And in terms of the hole for the bridge ground, having looked at it and having checked on the drawing, it's actually not a very long hole that needs to be drilled there. And I'm pretty confident that we can just drill that through at the correct angle once we understand exactly where the bridge is going to be positioned. So quite happy to go ahead with pretty much all of this now. Okay, so with that all sorted out now, the next thing we need to do is to make sure that we've got access to get this truss rod adjuster in and out if we need to. So we'll get rid of the fretboard for the time being and we can just fit that in. And basically what we need is just enough room to be able to slide this adjuster off its mount to be able to get it out. And it's a fairly easy thing to work out. That should, in theory, be enough, but there's no reason at all not to bring that back a little bit. As long as it doesn't come kind of beyond that line where the pickup ends, absolutely fine. So I think the best way of going about this is in two bits, because I only need to go down a very small amount underneath the actual top of the guitar. And in theory, this doesn't really have to be anything wonderful to look at. In practice, I'm going to make it as nice as I can. So I'm going to come to about there. So I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to find some bits of 18 mil MDF and just create a very temporary template. And I need to make sure that it's wide enough for this adjuster just to come forward that little bit. With that done, we can then put this in position, fasten it down, redo our little template on here and just route in that little bit as well. Okay, so that's that access cut out. And as you can see, we can get that in absolutely fine. I've come right the way back to that line and I haven't really cleaned it up because I'm going to be routing that out anyway. So all of that material is going to get removed. So that's not a problem. And if I just put that pickup roughly in position, you can see that all of that work is totally covered up. So can't be seen, which is brilliant. So with that done, I really don't think there is anything else now to stop me from getting this top glued on. And to that end, I've got a load of spool clamps, got some clamping blocks, and of course the trusty tight bond, and we'll just get this clamped on. Hopefully as we've got these screws to locate it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So we'll just start by getting a bit of glue on. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's all glued up. I've tried to get any kind of squeeze out cleaned up as best I can, but it's not always possible with these spool clamps. So we can give this a couple of hours now and we'll see how we've done. Okay, and there it is glued on. It all seems to have gone down really, really well. So next up is we just need to get this set up and get a flush trim bit onto the router and just go around this perimeter. We've done these two little bits, remember, so we don't have to worry about those, but the rest of it does need doing. And we also need to trim out this control cavity to its actual size. Okay, so that's the perimeter done. It needs a little tiny bit of cleaning up still, but most of that is pretty much good to go now. So the next thing I need to do is just clean out around this control cavity there. There is a fair bit of material there, so I do need to go careful, make sure I'm not gonna rip huge chunks of it out. And the other thing I need to do, and you might just be able to see them just poking underneath the bottom of the maple there, is those two little cutouts that I put in for the wiring and I need to make sure that the bearing for my cutter is below those because if not it will go into them and cut huge gouges in the top and we definitely don't want that so I'm just going to make sure that my router is set up correctly and that's it so we're confident we can go at that now without causing any damage gone really well happy with that didn't cause any damage which is always good and that only now really leaves us this kind of end piece here where the the center section of the neck is still a little bit proud so we just need to get that to the disc sander and get that cleaned off And there we have the top all cut to shape and cleaned up. And I'm really, really pleased with the way that's gone. It's nice and flush with the edge of everything. There's not a problem there at all. I'm particularly pleased with this control cavity. It's really, really nice and clean. Everything's really crisp, all the corners and everything. So yeah, pleased with how this has come together. There is still a little bit of cleaning up to do. We need to give that a sand just to get rid of this glue residue and everything. But apart from that, happy days. And the end is looking super swish. So all in all, a nice positive step forward there. We got the top on, we know exactly what's happening with the truss rod, the adjuster. We're starting to get our head around where the pickups and everything are gonna sit and how that's going to work. So some real positive forward progress there. I think next up, we're going to be kind of cleaning up this back face, get all the glue and crap off it. We need to put a round over on this. I can probably do 90% of that with the router and I'll just have to touch him around these horns a little bit. We need to route the binding channel on the rest of this 
and we also need to start thinking about routing for pickups etc but i'm going to leave all that for the next episode so i'll be back in a couple of days time when we can start to look at all that stuff until then like if you've liked subscribe if you haven't already done so and i'll look forward to seeing you then thanks a lot for watching bye bye